If somebody has questions about something you're doing and you throw an ESG report at them, that's not going to that's not going to address their concerns. What may address their concerns if you is if you can contextualize what it is that you did, why you did it, why it's critical for your business and your stakeholders. Joining me today is Matt Cantor, partner of research with Global Strategy Group. Now, your organization, Global Strategy Group, studies the divide between public perception and political rhetoric on ESG. Certainly a uh, very timely topic. What are some of the key takeaways from your 2023 report, and how can this information be applied to commercial real estate and REITs? Oh, that's a great question. I, one of the things that we found is that this conversation about ESG has not really penetrated the public writ large, despite there being an increase in political rhetoric and media coverage about it. Right? Media coverage has increased 300% in 18 months, but 59% of Americans say they've never heard of the term or are not familiar with the term ESG. Um, when we try to define it, depending on how the work is framed, we see some partisan differences emerge for uh, Democrats and Republicans, but at the same time, among when we when we talk about businesses uh, making decisions that they feel are best for their employees, their customers, particularly their communities, we see strong bipartisan support across the political spectrum. So framing and driving a narrative is really important. And so often, and particularly in the commercial real estate community, this is about data. This is about reporting. This is about disclosure, and that's obviously very critical. But numbers don't tell stories, people tell stories. So if we don't take an extra beat to figure out how are we gonna drive a narrative, then we're not controlling the framing of this conversation. We're not controlling the framing. We will see some partisan differences emerge on this. The other piece that I wanna mention is I would encourage everybody in the commercial real estate industry and all across industries to stop using the term ESG. Obviously, now BlackRock recently said they were making that commitment. We, we recommended that in our report. Not only do people not know what it means, acronyms get weaponized. And, and, and also, acronyms make people feel like they're not in the know, right? Uh, and that's not what this, this is about. And it re really becomes an oversimplification and kind of a lazy way of doing this very difficult work. Is there a term that you're advising to sort of substitute for ESG? I think there are some terms, responsible investing, long-term investing, uh, social impact. I think it depends on the exact initiative. I, but no, I don't think there's one catch-all term to this work. This work is incredibly diverse, dynamic, means different things in different situations. And so there isn't going to be one catch up. This is just sort of the complex world that businesses m must operate in and think about these things. Right. And, and you mentioned uh, in your first answer about sort of the, the increased political rhetoric, the increased media coverage. How do you advise your clients to, to address uh, these questions and topics when they come? I think that people really need to take stock of the types of assets that they have in these areas that that could become vulnerabilities, that, that could face criticism or questions from uh, stakeholders or from po policymakers. Um, similarly, though, <clears throat> They should lean into figure out, lean into these assets, right? They're doing this work for a reason, right? There, there's value behind this for the business because it's good for the business in one way, one shape or another. Building out a proactive strategy around that is critical to defending against it if you face criticism. So, what does that look like? Being able to tell a story, not just have a data point in an ESG report. If somebody has questions about something you're doing and you throw an ESG report at them, that's not going to that's not going to address their concerns. What may address their concerns if you is if you can contextualize what it is that you did, why you did it, why it's critical for your business and your stakeholders. Responding to some of these emerging issues requires preparation. What are some of the steps that that you advise practitioners to start to put in place now? I think the first piece is to sit down and do the type of auditing that, that this community, this industry is fantastic at, but do it with a from a value lens, right? 
and all the assets that you have in your business that are communicating some value, sh one shape or another, um, and and understand how are we how are we thinking about deploying that work um, proactively? How are we addressing people's questions reactively when they come up? Um, and then be prepared to tell stories about that work, why it is that you're prioritizing an, uh, this sustainability initiative, why it is that you, some that you had employees asking for more DEI resources. You know, being, being, thinking about third-party partnerships outside, you know, some markets are very good for this. Others, it's a little bit more difficult. But pushing yourself to, 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 to reach out and develop relationships in these areas um, so that when questions, so that you can deploy them to your employees, so that when questions come up, you can, you can contextualize them.